What's the best way to look at a nuke going off without your eyes melting on your skull? Raiders of the Lost Ark style. Well, let's first assume that you're far enough out of sight of the blast, but close enough that you should still be able to receive effects of the detonation. When a nuclear warhead detonates, it is often characterized by a large flash of light. This is mostly thermal radiation in the form of visible light and EM radiation. This light is often called a flash. This flash of light is very dangerous and weather permitting, the flash can cause damage far from the blast radius. The high energy thermal radiation can cause fires just from the brightness alone and darker colors which absorb more light are even more susceptible. This is even more of a problem for people who are looking at the direct detonation. An effect called flash blindness could have happened to this person. Flash blindness occurs when light from the initial blast is more than the retinas and the eyes can handle, but more importantly, less than what could cause permanent damage. Flash blindness would only last for upwards of 40 minutes at most. This is similar to a more common occurring effect called welder's flash. The second, less common eye damage that can occur is retinal burning that causes permanent eye damage and could cause complete loss of vision. The most common damage that causes is minor visual defects, which are most likely not noticed. The question is, how do you minimize chance of receiving eye damage and the minimize flash damage? This is where the variable density goggles step in. The goggles were originally intended to be used by aircrafts, but they fell out of use and were primarily used by AAA gunners. The goggles are composed of black rubber face mask where two plastic lenses would mount. These lenses themselves are composed of two lenses. A central dial would then be used to rotate them, allowing you to vary the density of the goggles. A red flip down visor could be then employed to make tracer rounds more visible under various conditions. The goggles were also great for tracking objects across the sun and in bright conditions, which is the reason why they were so popular with the AAA gunners. Now, back to the main point of the video, eye protection from nuclear bombs. This style of goggle were used during the bombing run of Nagasaki, depicted in this short documentary. Armed with these nuclear flash protective goggles, the crew of Boxcar is on a mission to drop the second atomic Now let's take a look at the goggles themselves. They come in an olive green metal tin. Opening up, we see an instruction sheet is attached to the lid, which reads, the variable intensity goggles provide a goggle for tracking a target in the vicinity of and across the face of the sun. It is also equipped with a red plastic visor for observing tracer bullets under various conditions of sunlight and brightness. Below that is information on repair kits, which could be used in the event the goggles were broken to repair them. Behind the instruction sheet is more instructions on how to repair it and how to clean it and repair things. And also a diagram of how that's assembled. Let's now take a look at the glasses. They're wrapped in a protective paper and we'll get set that off to the side. As stated before, they're made out of a black plastic. They have an olive green adjustable strap for adjusting it to the size of your head. Two breather ports and the red visor for the tracer arms, which flips up and down. Made by Polaroid. The center pin pops out, which then allows you to slide the visor out in case it is damaged. Once you have your new visor in, you just push the pin down until it clicks. And so, right now it's in the darkest mode, but we can rotate it to decrease the density of it. Turning with the back side, you can see the lenses rotate. How this works is it's two polarized lenses, which then rotate across each other, decreasing and increasing the density depending on which way the knob is turned. Above the center adjustable knob is the US and then the date that they were made. 
which in case these goggles were made in 1944. Now let's try them on. Let's first take a look at sparklers through the lenses. Throughout the clip, I will be adjusting the goggles. Due to the fact of how the camera setup and how the polarized lenses are, you won't get the full effect, but through the screen you'll be able to get somewhat of an effect of how the objects look through the lenses. Sparklers with a red visor down. Now let's take a look at some burning magnesium. For those who've seen magnesium burning in real life, they know how bright magnesium can be when it's burning, and these goggles cut that down by a factor of magnitudes. Now let's take a look at LED lights. What's cool is you can see each individual LED. That's all for today, and thanks for watching. See you next time. Well, I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. So, my cad, I bought me a Jeep. I got that bug, and I can't sleep. Uranium! Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever.